Category O, Lecture 29, Kosul Duality. Let us start with recalling our graded setup. Let K be an algebraically closed field and A a positively graded K algebra. So A is a direct sum of homogeneous components AI, where I runs through non-negative integers. Moreover, the component A0 is semi-simple and all AI are finite dimension. We denote by mu the multiplication map on A, and then we can define the quadratic dual of A as A shriek, which is the quotient of the tensor algebra of the A0, A0 by module A1 dual, modulo the ideal, which is generated by the image of the second homogeneous component of mu star. The algebra A shriek is by definition positively graded and even quadratic, which means that it's a quotient by an ideal which is generated by degree two elements. We denote by A F G mod the category of locally finite dimensional graded A modules, and we consider the category LCP of linear complexes of projective A modules. Then in the previous lecture, we saw the following theorem that the category LCP is equivalent to the category A shriek FG mod. To describe the quadratic duality further, let us introduce the notation for graded simple A modules. So let L1, L2, and so on Ln be the complete and irredundant list of graded simple A modules, which are concentrated in degree zero. Denote by Pi the projective cover of Li. Also consider the graded projective resolution of Li denoted P upper I dot. And let P overlined upper I dot denote the linear part of P upper I dot. So P overlined is a subcomplex of P dot. Let the fancy P dot denote the direct sum of all P overlines. We consider the category D lower arrow of A F G mod, which is the derived category of right bounded complexes concentrated under a shifted diagonal. And we also consider the category D upper arrow, A shriek F G mod, which is a derived category of left bounded complexes concentrated above a shifted diagonal. So we have the quadratic duality functor K from D down arrow A F G mod to D up arrow A shriek F G mod, which is given by essentially homing with the complex P. And we have the adjoint functor K prime in the opposite direction, which is given by tensoring with P. So now we can formulate the quadratic duality theorem. So denote by M in the triangle bracket, the shift of grading, and as usual M in the straight brackets, we denote the shift in homological position. So then we have the following theorem. The pair K prime K is an adjoint pair of functors. Then both K and K prime interact in a non-trivial way with shifting in both grading and in homological position. So K after I's shift in homological position and J's shift of grading is isomorphic to I plus J's shift in homological position and minus J shifts of grading after K. And similarly for K prime. Then the functor K sends A simples to A shriek injectives and also A shriek simples to A projectives. Moreover, under the assumption that A is quadratic, the quadratic duality functors induce equivalences between the following categories. So we can take the linear complexes of projective modules over A and intersect them with the category D down arrow, and this category is equivalent to the intersection of A shriek GF mod with the up arrow category. And similarly, the intersection of A GF mod with the down arrow category 
is equivalent to the category of linear complexes of injective h -rick modules intersected with the up arrow category. So now we can define COSUL algebras. Definition, a positively graded algebra A is said to be COSUL, provided that the complexes P upper I dot and P overline upper I dot coincide for all I. Equivalently, directly from the definitions, A is COSUL if and only if the fact that the I's extension from LS to LT shifted by K in degree is non-zero, so this fact implies that the shift in degree is equal to minus the degree of the extension. And this should be true for all i, k, and for all indexes s and t of our simple modules. So in other words, we can phrase it that all graded extensions between simple A modules belong to the main diagonal. One immediate corollary from the definition is that the algebra A is COSUL if and only if the opposite algebra is COSUL. And the reason for that is the fact that extensions between simple modules can also be computed using the injective co-resolutions. COSUL algebras were originally introduced in the paper by Pridi in 1970. But the COSUL duality theorem, which is the main subject of today's talk, so this was proved by Billingson, Ginsburg, and Zergel in 1996 in their paper COSUL duality patterns in representation theory. Let us first consider some examples. The polynomial algebra in one variable is COSUL, since the projective resolution of the unique graded simple module over this algebra has the following form. So in the homological position zero, we have just this algebra. And then in the homological position minus one, we have this algebra shifted by minus one in the graded degree, so that the top is in degree one. And then the map between them is just multiplication by x. So this is a projective resolution of kx simple module k, and it is manifestly linear, so the algebra k of x is COSUL. Example 2, consider the algebra of dual numbers. So this is a quotient of the polynomial algebra k of x, modulo the ideal generated by x squared. So this algebra is also COSUL because the projective resolution of the unique graded simple A module K looks as follows. So we have A in homological position zero. We have A shifted by minus one in homological position minus one, and the map is multiplication with X. We have A shifted by minus two in the homological position minus two, and then the map to homological position minus one, is multiplication with x. And this continues infinitely to the left. So this resolution is also manifestly linear. Consider now the algebra A given by the quiver with two vertices s and e and two arrows, alpha from s to e and beta from e to s, modulo the relation that alpha after beta is zero. So this algebra is also COSU because here are the projective resolutions of A symbols. So the simple module which corresponds to the vertex S, if we place it in degree zero, then its projective cover is the projective S E S, and then the radical of this projective is generated in degree one, so the projective module E S for the vertex E is a submodule of the projective for the vertex S, and this resolution is clearly linear. For the second simple module, E, so its projective cover is E and S, and then the kernel S is, G, is in degree 1, so its projective cover is S, E, S, the projective at S, and again the kernel is E, S, which is projective and is generated in degree 2. So this resolution is also linear. So both simple modules have linear resolutions, so this algebra is COSU. Now let us go to negative examples. 
the quotient of the polynomial algebra kx by x to the power 3 is not COSU, because the projective resolution of the integrated simple module k over this algebra looks as follows. So in the homological position 0, we have just a. So that's fine, that's generated in degree 0. Then in the homological position minus 1, we have a shifted by minus 1, and the map to the homological position 0 is multiplication by x. That's again fine, because a shifted by minus 1 is generated in degree 1. But then the problem is that in the homological position 2, we have the algebra a shifted by minus 3, and not minus 2, as required for Koshulmas. The map to the homological position minus 1 is multiplication with x squared. So because of this problematic term, so we have a term in the minimal projective resolution, which is not generated on the main diagonal, so this is algebra is not COSU. So another negative example is the following quiver algebra. So we have three vertices, 1, 2, and 3, and four arrows, alpha from 1 to 2, beta from 2 to 1, gamma from 2 to 3, and delta from 3 to 2. Modulo the relations that gamma after alpha is 0 and beta after delta is 0, and then that alpha after beta is equal to delta after gamma. So if we consider the projective resolution of the simple L3 for this algebra, we will see the following. So the projective at 3 is 3 to 1. So we place it such that the top is in degree 0. The kernel 2, 1 is generated in degree 1, so we cover it by the projective 2, 3, 1, and 2. So this is a projective at 2. The new kernel is 3, 2. It's generated in degree 2. So on the second step, we need a module generated in degree 2. This is P3. And then it's 3, 2, 1. And the new kernel is now generated in degree 4. So this is a 1 in degree 4. But we are at the step 3 of the resolution. So at the step 3, we need a module which is generated in degree 4. So this shows that this algebra is not COSU. So now let us formulate the COSU duality theorem. So the theorem is due to Bailinson, Ginsburg, and Zergel. But I will present a slightly adjusted formulation, as in my paper with Sergei Evsienko and Katarina Stropel, because I want to adjust this formulation to the quadratic duality theorem. Okay, so consider the setup of the quadratic duality. We have the quadratic duality functor k from the down arrow category for a to the up arrow category for a shrink. The claim is that this functor is an equivalence if and only if a is COSU. In the latter case, that is, if a is COSU, k sends a projectives to a shriek simples, and the adjoint functor k prime sends a shriek injectives to a simples. So here is a proof of this theorem following the quadratic duality. By construction, if you start with li and then apply k, and after that apply k prime, we will get the complex p overlined upper i dot. Therefore, k is an equivalence if and only if li is actually isomorphic to p over line upper i dot for all i. But of course, li is isomorphic to the projective resolution of li, which is p upper i dot for all i. So therefore, k is an equivalence if and only if p upper i dot is equal to p overlined upper i dot for all i, which is exactly the definition of a Cauchy algebra. So the second claim of the theorem follows from the realization of A projectives as simple objects in the category of linear complexes of projective A modules. So this implies that K sends A projectives to A shriek simples, which are simple objects here. And the last claim follows from our descriptions of injectives in LCP. So injectives in LCP were exactly these complexes P overlined. So here are some consequences of the Kossul duality theorem. First corollary, if A is COSUL, then A shriek is COSUL as well. 
proof. So if K is an equivalence, so this is the content of the causal duality theorem, then of course the adjoint K prime is an equivalence as well. And we know that the quadratic duality functor K for A shriek is the conjugation of K prime for A by the K duality. Therefore, the quadratic duality functor for A shriek is also an equivalence, and thus A shriek is a Kosul algebra. Corollary 2, if A is Kosul, then A is quadratic. Proof. If A is Kosul, then we have just seen that A shriek is Kosul. Therefore, by Kosul duality, the double shriek of A is isomorphic to A. But this means exactly that A is a quadratic algebra, because it's a shriek of something, and shriek is by definition quadratic. Please note that we have already seen an example of a quadratic algebra that is not Kosul. So any Kosul algebra is quadratic, but not vice versa in general. Here is an example. Consider the pass algebra A of the quiver with two vertices S and E, the arrow alpha from S to E, and the arrow beta from E to S. Modulo the relation alpha after beta is equal to zero. Recall that this is exactly the algebra behind the principal block of category O for the Lie algebra SL2. So we have the following graded A projectives. So the projective PS has S in degree 0, E in degree 1, and S in degree 2. And the projective PE has E in degree 0 and S in degree 1. The quadratic dual of A is the algebra for the following quiver. So we have the same vertices S and E, but now the vertex alpha dual from E to S and beta dual from S to E, modulo the relation that alpha dual after beta dual is equal to zero. So in the first quiver we have a relation at the vertex E, in the second quiver we have a relation at the vertex S. And similarly to the first quiver, the graded projectives for the quadratic dual A shriek look as follows. So for the point S, we have S in degree zero and E in degree one, and for the point E, we have E in degree 0, S in degree 1, and E in degree 2. So now let us consider the projective resolutions of A simples. We saw these resolutions already. So the resolution of S, we have PS, and then the radical of PS is PE, here shifted so that it's generated in degree 1. And the projective resolution of LE, so we have PE, the radical is S, so we have PS shifted so that it's generated in degree 1, and then the radical of that map is PE now shifted in degree 2. So these are the projective resolutions of simple A modules. And the Kosul duality says that they are mapped to injective objects in the category of locally finite dimensional graded A shriek modules. So here are the injectives over A shriek. So we have the injective IS with S in the socal, degree zero, and E in the top, degree minus one. And then we have the injective IE with E in the socal in degree zero, S in degree minus one, and E in the top, degree minus two. And now we can compare these resolutions with these injectives. So this resolution has S, in the zero position and E in position minus one. So S in the zero position, E in position minus one. So this resolution corresponds to this injective. And similarly, this resolution has E in position zero, S in position minus one, and E in position minus two, just like this injective. Also, it's good to note that the algebras A and A shriek are actually isomorphic. And this isomorphism swaps the simple modules. So if you look at these quivers, so these quiver algebras are, of course, isomorphic, but we need to swap the simple modules S and E. So now let us discuss Kosul cell duality of the regular block of category O. 
Let G be a semi-simple finite dimensional complex Lie algebra with a fixed triangular decomposition into the negative part and minus the Cartan subalgebra H and the positive part and plus. Let O be the associated BGG category and O0 the principal block of O. Let A denote the basic algebra of this block. So O0 is equivalent to A mod. The theorem due to Zergel, the algebra A is Kosul, moreover, it is Kosul self dual. That is, A shriek is isomorphic to A. So, in what follows, I will prove causality of A, but I will not prove the Kosul self duality. The original proof of both statements is geometric, it uses realization of O via sheaves on the flag variety. And the theorem was first proved in Zergil's paper, Category O Perverse Shifts and the Modules over the Coinvariance for the Wild Group from 1990. So, before we go to the proof of causality, let us discuss Kosul modules. Let A be a Kosul algebra. A graded A module M is called Kosul, provided that its minimal projective resolution is linear. So it belongs to the category of linear complexes of projective modules. For example, the indecomposable projectives are, of course, Kosul by definition, because a minimal projective resolution coincide with the module and by definition belong to LCP. A less trivial example, all graded simple modules are Kosul. This is because the algebra A is Kosul if and only if the projective resolutions of simples are linear. So this is the content of the definition of a Kosul algebra. Let us denote by K of A the category of all Kosul A modules. And similarly, we can call a graded A module Kokosul, provided that its minimal injective co-resolution belongs to the category of linear complexes of injective modules. So if you have a Kosul algebra, then all indecomposable injectives are Kokosul, and similarly, all simple modules are Kokosul. And let us denote by K prime of A the category of Kokosul A modules. Corollary from the Kosul duality theorem. The Kosul duality functor K restricts to an equivalence between K of A and K prime of A shriek. So this is a direct consequence of the Kosul duality, which interprets linear resolutions as modules over the quadratic dual algebra A shriek. So now in the category O setup, we claim that there is an interesting class of Kosul modules, namely, we claim that all Verma modules are Kosul. So the trivial case is that delta E is Kosul because it's projective, and delta W0 is Kosul because it's simple. In order to prove the claim for all Verma modules, what we really need to prove is that the graded x of degree i from delta x to Ly shifted by j can only be non-zero in the situation when j is equal to minus i. So this is just the definition of the fact that the projective resolution of delta must be linear. All x to simples should be on the main diagonal. So we will prove this by induction on the length of A. The basis we already discussed, delta E is Kosul because it's projective. Recall that if S is a simple reflection, such that xs is greater than x, then theta s delta x surjects onto delta xs, with the kernel being delta x shifted by minus 1. Also recall that if we translate through the s wall an indecomposable projective pw, we either get pw shifted by 1 plus pw shifted by minus 1, which happens exactly if ws is smaller than w, or otherwise we get a direct sum of unshifted projectives. Consequence, if we start from a linear projective resolution of delta x and translate through the S wall, we get, of course, a projective resolution of theta x delta x. And because of this assumption, it will live on the main diagonal just 
above the main diagonal or just below the main diagonal. And then this module theta s delta x surjects onto delta x s with the kernel delta x shifted by minus 1. We know that the projective resolution of delta x shifted by minus 1 is linear and lives actually just below the diagonal. So we can take the home and take the cone, and we get that the projective resolution of delta xs lives on the diagonal, just above the diagonal, or just below the diagonal. But since our algebra is positively graded and Verma modules are generated in degree 0, of course, if you construct the minimal projective resolution, it cannot have any components above the main diagonal. So the part which we get, which is above the main diagonal, must be homotopic to zero. It remains to prove that there are no extensions from Verma modules to simples just below the main diagonal. So if S is a simple reflection such that XS is smaller than X, while YS is greater than Y, we can start from such an X and apply the right derived of the Koshaflin functor Ks to obtain the following. So we start with our extension, which we want to prove that it is zero, and interpret it as a homomorphism in the derived category, from the Verma module delta x to Ly shifted by minus i minus 1 in degree and i in homological position. Now we apply Rks, which is a self-equivalence of the derived category, so we get a similar home. And now Rks applied to delta x is just delta xs, this we know. While when we apply Rkx to Ly, under the assumption that ys is greater than y, we need to shift Ly by 1 in degree and by 1 in homological position. And this is what we get. And this home in the derived category is zero due to the inductive assumption. In the other case, that is when ys is smaller than y, we apply the left derived of the shuffling functor cs to the extension from delta xs to ly shifted by minus i minus 2. So this is the degree i extension to the simple shifted by minus i minus 2. So this is zero. And since the left derived of Cs is a self-equivalence of the derived category, we get that the degree i x from delta x to the LCS applied to Ly shifted by minus i minus 2 should be zero. But this second module LCS applied to Ly shifted by minus i minus 2, it has Ly shifted by minus i minus 1 as simple top and some LWs shifted by minus i minus 2, where Ws is greater than W in the SOCL. So we already know that in degree i plus 2, no x to such LW are possible by the first step. And consequently, the x to Ly shifted by minus 1 minus i should also vanish. Let us consider an example. Consider the D-algebra SL3, in which case the wild group consists of IM, S, T, ST, TS, and STS. The dominant firma is projective and hence coincides with its projective resolution. Applying theta S and taking the cone, we get that the minimal projective resolution of delta S consists of PS in degree 0 and PE shifted by minus 1 in the homological position minus 1. Similarly, the minimal projective resolution of delta T consists of PT in the homological position 0 and PE shifted by minus 1 in the homological position minus 1. Applying theta T to the minimal projective resolution of delta S and then taking the cone, we obtain that the minimal projective resolution of delta ST has PST in the homological position 0, PS and PT both shifted by minus 1 in the homological position minus 1, 
and PE shifted by minus 2 in the homological position minus 2. The projective resolution of delta TS is obtained from the projective resolution of delta ST by swapping the roles of S and T. And finally, the projective resolution of delta W0 has PW0 in position 0, PST and PTS both shifted by minus 1 in the homological position minus 1, PS and PT both shifted by minus 2 in the homological position minus 2, and finally PE shifted by minus 3 in the homological position minus 3. So let us now discuss the proof of causality of the principal block of category O. So what we need to prove is that the simple modules in O0 have linear projective resolutions. We will prove this by downward induction with respect to the lengths of W. If W is equal to W0, then the simple module LW is actually standard. It coincides with the Verma module delta W0, and hence the claim is true. We have already proved that all Verma modules have linear projective resolutions. So let S be a simple reflection such that WS is smaller than W, and consider the translated module theta S applied to LW. Recall that theta S applied to a projective Px is either Px shifted by 1 plus Px shifted by minus 1, so this is true if Xs is smaller than x, or otherwise this is a direct sum of some unshifted projective modules, possibly with multiplicities. Hence, the projective resolution of the module theta S LW lives on the diagonal, just above the diagonal, or just below the diagonal. Moreover, the projectives above and below the diagonal, they correspond to x such that xs is smaller than x. This is because of this description. Also recall that the module theta s lw has simple top lw in degree minus 1. It has simple sokol lw in degree 1, and then it has semi-simple Janssen's middle, which is concentrated in degree 0, and which in particular contains LWS. So now we can complete the proof of causality. So by induction, we assume that the projective resolution of LW is linear. To obtain a projective resolution of the Janssen's middle, we need to extend the homes from and to the translated module to its top and socle to the projective resolutions and then take cones. So this construction produces a complex of projective modules which lives on the diagonal, just above the diagonal, or just below the diagonal, and such that in this complex projectives which appear above and below the diagonal, they correspond to x such that xs is smaller than x. Note that LWS, it's a simple module, it's generated in degree zero, so its projective resolution must live on or below the main diagonal. This is due to the positivity of the gradient. So assume that the minimal projective resolution of LWS has a non-trivial subdiagonal component Px shifted by minus i minus 1 in the homological position i, and let us assume that i is maximal possible with this property. Applying the right derived of the Koshaflin functor Ks, we get a degree i plus 1 extension from Lws to Ks Lx. So this is because Ws is smaller than W, so applying RKS just shifts LWS by 1 in position and in the gradient. At the same time, LX corresponds to X such that XS is smaller than X. Therefore, KS applied to LX is a non-zero module, and it's, it is concentrated below the diagonal. 
So we get a non-zero extension below the diagonal of degree strictly higher than i. And this contradicts the maximality of i and completes the proof of causality. Finally, let us discuss linear complexes of tilting modules. Denote by Tw the standard graded lift of the indecomposable tilting module which corresponds to an element W in the while group. Recall that this means that the unique simple subquotient of Tw isomorphic to Lw should be concentrated in degree zero. Let T be the direct sum of all Tw's. Definition, a complex T dot of tilting modules is called linear, provided that the i's component ti of this complex belongs to the additive closure of our module t shifted by i in degree for all i in z. And we denote by LCT the category of linear complexes of tilting modules. The ring duality functor Tw0 induces an equivalence between the category LCP and the category LCT. In particular, it follows that there are no homotopies between linear complexes of tilting modules, since there are no homotopies between linear complexes of projective modules. Here are some bonus properties related to causality. Claim dual Verma modules are co causal In order to see this, we can apply the graded simple preserving duality to the claims that all Verma modules are causal. Verma modules are COSUL, applying duality, we get that all dual Verma modules are COCOSUL. Next claim, tilting resolutions of dual Verma modules are linear. So all dual Verma modules have tilting resolutions. The claim is that these resolutions are linear. In order to see this, we start with the claims that all Verma modules are COSUL and apply the Ringel duality functor TW0 to this claim. So TW0 applied to Verma modules gives dual Verma modules and applied to linear projective complexes gives linear tilting complexes. And finally, tilting co-resolutions of Verma modules are linear. So we start with the claim that tilting resolutions of dual Verma modules are linear and apply this graded simple preserving duality. And we end up in the claim that tilting co-resolutions of Verma modules are linear. Here is an example. Let G be SL2, and then the while group consists of E and S. So here are the graded tilting modules in O0. So we have two modules TS, which is just the simple module S concentrated in degree 0, and we have the tilting module TE, which has E concentrated in degree 0, and then has simple top S in degree minus 1, and simple socle S in degree 1. So this is just the projective shifted so that the middle part E is in degree 0. So here are the tilting resolutions of dual Verma modules and co-resolutions of Verma modules in this case. So the dual Verma module Nabla S is tilting, so it coincides with its tilting resolution. The dual Verma module Nabla E so it has the Sokol E concentrated in degree zero. It's a quotient of the tilting module TE, and the Sokol E of Nabla in degree zero means exactly that the middle of TE is in degree zero. And the kernel of this projective is exactly S in degree one. So this is TS shifted so that this resolution is linear. So dually, the Verma module delta S is just the tilting S in degree zero, and the Verma module delta E is a submodule of TE, such that the quotient is TS shifted by one. So it's in degree one. So the tilting co-resolution of delta E is again a linear complex of tilting modules. Some questions for PhD students. Question one. Give a direct proof from the definitions that any COSUL algebra is quadratic. Question two, construct an example of a local quadratic algebra that is not COSUL. Question three, 
Classify COSU modules for pass algebras of Dinkin Quivers of type AN. Question 4. Fill in all the details in the proof of causality of O0. And question 5. Construct tilting co-resolutions for Vermont and dual Vermont modules over SL3. Thank you very much and see you next time.